German soldiers and officers that continued to resist after the official surrender at Stalingrad. This had been a widely popular topic for decades. According to some German sources, over 11,000 soldiers refused to lay down their arms at the official surrender. They continued to resist, hiding in cellars and sewers. But by early March 1943, the remaining small and isolated pockets of resistance had surrendered. Legion or reality? So far, there was no evidence about it. After weeks of research, in the recently released stock of archival material, Stahl data found at last the document that confirmed this. The operative report of 38th Motorized Rifle Brigade, issued to 64th Army on the 5th of February 1943, mentioned 38 motorized rifle brigade, still located in a previously indicated area, was finishing the clearing and the collecting of weapons and ammunition. At 22 hours on February 4, 1943, our soldiers discovered 18 German SS fascists in the basement of a building. They refused to surrender and opposed fierce resistance. Even as the building was encircled, they continued fighting back. They were eventually destroyed. The report of the Dawn Front HQ issued the same day picks up this information as relevant and confirms 64th Army was putting itself in order, its units still located in the previously occupied sectors. In the area of 38th Motorized Rifle Brigade, 18 armed SS men were found in a basement who refused to surrender. The discovered Germans were destroyed. Since there were no SS troops in Stalingrad, this allegation seems doubtful and the SS mansion is probably an error. It's difficult to determine what kind of troops were encountered by 38th Motorized Rifle Brigade, but they definitely were some. A remarkable NKVD report from March 1943 shows the tenacity of some of the German groups. The mopping up of counter-revolutionary elements in the city of Stalingrad proceeded. German soldiers who had hidden themselves in dugouts and trenches presented armed resistance after the fighting had ended. This armed resistance continued until the 15th of February 1943 and in a few areas until 20th February. Most of the armed groups were liquidated by March. During this period of armed conflict with the Germans, the brigade units killed 2,418 soldiers and officers and captured 8,646 soldiers and officers, escorting them to POW camps and handing them over. Another evidence seems to confirm the idea that some soldiers believed that fighting on was better than Soviet captivity. Historians have studied a selection of over 10,000 letters sent by soldiers to their families in Germany. Those letters were sent from inside the Stalingrad cauldron, encircled by Soviet troops between 20 December 1942 and 16th of January 1943. Almost every letter expressed the belief in Germany's ultimate victory and the willingness to continue fighting at Stalingrad whatever the odds to achieve that victory. And although it's clear that many of the soldiers were well aware that they would not be able to escape from Stalingrad, in their letters to their families they still boasted that they were proud to sacrifice themselves for the Führer. Some investigators say that these letters were found to be forgeries 
and that they were not actually written by soldiers at Stalingrad. Others think that they are authentic. Nothing has been proved about the letters one way or the other. There is no proof that they were forgeries and no proof either that they were actually from Stalingrad. Either way, there is a wide gap between what these letters said and what actually happened. If there were indeed as many as 10,000 soldiers still hiding and fighting after the official surrender, they still represent a small fraction of the total that surrendered during the last days at Stalingrad. About 10% of this total. And an even smaller one if we consider the prisoners taken during the entire course of the campaign. But mopping up groups of soldiers was not all. The demining of the city was also required. For this, a specific engineering department was created. The main task of demining Stalingrad and its region was assigned to military units as well as to civilians. Sappers were trained among the civilian population. A great deal of work to identify the minefields left in the region after the Battle of Stalingrad was carried out by the NKVD. The interrogation of the prisoners of war made it possible to determine the location of 59 minefields as well as the fact that mines were installed on a number of important sites in Stalingrad and the region, controlled by radio from Hamburg in Germany. Sappers managed to extract and neutralize more than 1,000 such mines, including those installed by the Germans inside the tractor, barricades and Red October factories. By May 15, 1943, more than 2.5 million anti-tank and anti-personnel mines, artillery shells, aerial bombs, grenades and other explosives were removed. So many trophies were captured in the Battle of Stalingrad that the railways could not cope with their transportation. They were simply stored right on the battlefields. By May the 1st, more than 2,000 captured tanks and armored vehicles, 2,500 guns of various calibers, as well as 12,000 vehicles were collected and stored. And the reconstruction of the city itself was to last many long years.